Not okay. I'm suffering with this a little bit. You smell, I'm really calling all the neighbors now. My director is looking at me like, what are you doing? Don't waste any food. And I wish you could smell this, but of course you're gonna do it. Hi everyone, I uh, hope you're doing well. Today I'm bringing you something really special for us, for Peruvians, and it's called arroz chaufa. You might know this as fried rice. This is, without doubt, one of the most popular dishes in Peru. We're talking about this Peruvian Chinese fusion that started many years ago. We're talking about the 1849 approximately. Many Chinese people started coming to Peru to work in the landfills and also to help building the train rails here in Lima. Years after that, many of these Chinese guys started opening their own business with the money they could save little by little. Most of them ended up opening uh, small restaurants that nowadays we can call pensiones or maybe fondas, which are really but really low cost restaurants. In that time, they were very well accepted by the low class because of the flavor of the food. It was so tasty and the price was very cheap. But of course, it was rejected by the high class of Lima because they considered it was too cheap. It was nothing glamorous in that kind of food. So this Peruvian Chinese fusion is one of the most popular we have in Peruvian territory. This Peruvian Chinese fusion is called chifa and one of the results of this fusion is the arroz chaufa or fried rice. So this is really simple, really basic. The main ingredients are rice, ginger, garlic, green onion and the leftovers of what you have of the previous day. I'm talking about chicken, pork, meat, eggs, sausage, whatever you have. Everything is welcome here. And now I'm gonna show you all the ingredients we're gonna use today for this. We will start getting uh, all the ingredients ready and I decided to start with the onion. We cut the onion in two, take the head off and start cutting through all the onion without hitting the end to make a good cut. Always make sure we have a sharp knife and please be careful with the fingers. We won't want an accident, especially when we have some spectators around. If you wanna look cool, like I'm looking right now, keep the pinky finger up, as you see right now. Then, cut through the middle a couple of times without getting the end again. And now we're ready to make a perfect uh, little cubes for the base seasoning. This cut is really easy to make and one of the most used every day. As I said before, this is the most common cut technique for base seasoning of the food, called brunoa. Here we go. When we use garlic, we have to check a couple of things before we use it. For example, I always open it and check if he has a little green germ in the middle. If he has it, that means that this garlic is getting a bit old and it's about to sprout. That germ that you can find in the middle is harmless, so it's not gonna be anything bad. But it has kind of a bitter flavor, so it would be way better to take it out. After that, we just start chopping this and try to chop it as thin as we cut the onion. So now, we're going with one of the most important ingredients of this dish and in general of all the Chinese Peruvian fusion we call chifa which is the ginger. First of all we have to peel the ginger. We can use a knife, we could use a spoon if you want to make it easier and don't um, maybe don't hurt yourself. Look at this, it's really easy. In my case I feel more, com uh, more comfortable using the knife. So I'm gonna take one piece here so after this, we need to chop this quite quite thin, quite small. There's a couple of more options we have. For example, if you want to chop this, the idea would be to take really thin slices, and then it's like doing a julienne and then brunoise. Cut here. Another option we have with this would be to take a fork and press the ginger. The advantage of this way is like you can feel how juicy is the ginger. All this flavor is going to the pan and of course to the food. But let's go to my favorite way to use the ginger in this case. In the tiniest part, in the tiniest hole, I'm gonna press this really hard. Why is it my favorite? Well, it's mainly because you can kind of dissolve all this ginger when you make something and all the flavor just spreads everywhere. This part that stays out, it's quite dried, I don't really use it. Don't forget also to take the rest of the shredded ginger here inside because most of it gets dropped. It's quite liquidy and that's what happens. So this is it. 
green onion, spring onion or cebollita china in Peru. This is one of the traditional ingredients of this dish and this really adds a nice touch to it. We need to cut it as small as we can to add it almost at the end of our preparation and well we use this in many different dishes. It's also used a lot as a garnish in lots of different kinds of soup here in Peru. We have some upper leg here of chicken. You can use any part, you can use the chest. This is my favorite part because the flavor is, is quite good. Probably most of you are gonna find already boneless chicken <laughs> but here in Peru you find it is more expensive and personally I love <laughs> eating my chicken with bones and everything it adds a lot of flavor and I wouldn't replace that for anything else definitely not you can calculate one finger and then cut it well I know this might look like a bat but this is actually pork it doesn't matter what part of the pork we use, this is one of the most uh, common ingredients in the Chinese Peruvian cuisine. And we just have to take the bone out and of course I'm gonna make it in other 5 seconds. Here we go. In the case of beef, it doesn't really matter what part we use or the quality of it, but depending on that, we cook it between 3 quarters and well done. The difference between how we cut the beef against how we cut the chicken and pork is that beef cut has to be a bit bigger because the small pieces could get overcooked really fast and the texture of the meat <laughs> would be like a caterpillar shoe and of course we don't want something like that here. Okay so we're gonna start uh, with the eggs. We're gonna make the eggs here. Of course we have to heat our pan, wok, whatever we have. What I'm gonna do is first make this uh, eggs and then put it on the side on the plate to then mix it with the rice. There's some people that mix it everything on top of this, so they make the eggs and then they put the rice and all the seasonings, but I prefer to do it this way, so you'll choose. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of salt. The rice, for example, has not much salt, because then we're gonna add some soy sauce and we don't want to make this too salty, to make it perfect. I'm using two eggs per one portion, but you can use more if you want, of course, there's, there's no, no limit with that. After we're done with the eggs, we're gonna use the pan again, we're gonna put some oil, and we're gonna start frying everything we have. Uh, if we only have chicken, let's go with the chicken, the sausage, everything. In this case, I'm gonna with chicken that I have, the fire's not too high, but... This little kitchen that I, this little burner that I, that I got actually has a really strong fire. I love it. I love it so much. This is actually the first time I use it. So, you know, I don't know if you can see this, but this fire is perfect for making this decision. And also add some pork. Maybe we don't need much salt, but I can add a little pinch of it, that's it. There we go, we make sure, especially the pork, is really well fried. And then we can do the same with the, uh, with the eggs. We can put it in the same bowl, or maybe we can put it in, the next, in another plate. We can do it, you can do it the way, the way you want. So, I have an extra plate here. And... After this, the last ingredient you have to go with is the beef, in this case. Um, it's gonna be a really good one. This is what in some chifas we know as chifa especial, special one. It comes with beef, pork, chicken, and also with, uh, with shrimps. Sausage is not something they use really in these restaurants, but it's something we use at home every time we make a, a home version of it. So. Bit of salt, maybe, yeah. Bit of pepper. Fire is quite strong. I'm gonna use my special special spoon. This 
smell is really calling all the neighbors now. I have no idea how many how many neighbors I have right now watching me and admiring me, of course. Saying, oh my god, he's amazing, I wanna be like him, but yeah, it's not easy, so I feel really bad for them now. I'm gonna put the fire down again. Oh, look at this. It smells really good. Let's go now with our fried rice. We did some oil. I'm gonna use a lot of rice here. First ingredients we go with onion, some garlic, and of course ginger. Okay. Fire not too strong at the beginning. Okay. To let this fry it really well. Oh, you could smell this. This is really good. I'm gonna go with the rice. This is a lot of rice. Okay, normally the portions in these chifas are really big. Or like for truck drivers, this is my, my director's portions, you know, that kind of. Once we have it in the pan, the pan needs to be really hot. And we need to press the rice a little bit. By the way, the rice needs to be cold. It will be better if you do it the day before, but it's okay if you don't. Um, you can just do it a couple of hours before making this dish. And it needs to be cold. That's one of the most important things here. After this is here, I'm gonna add a couple of things. I'm gonna add some drops of sesame oil. Then it comes some soy sauce. It can be two spoons or something, up to you, depending if you want it to be quite salty or you don't like it too much. But it's always good to add at least a little bit of it. After this, we go the scramble eggs we had. We go with all the meat, steaks, everything with it. Oh my god, I wish you could smell this, but of course you're gonna do it because you're gonna make it at home, right? Then I have here green onion, Chinese onion, we call in Spanish cebollita china, like Chinese onion. So we're gonna add a good portion of it on top. Believe it or not, this is really heavy. <laughs> so I'm suffering with this a little bit. But it's all good. Comes the time to serve. We turn off the fire, we have our plate ready for this. Well, there's more here. My director is looking at me like, what are you doing? Don't waste any food. And okay, don't worry. I'm gonna serve more here. And here we are. Okay, so this is how we make a homemade fried rice, Peruvian style. I know the portion looks really big. And actually this is how we get served when we go to these restaurants that are not expensive and are delicious. Okay, so share this with your favorite drink and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned, there are many more things coming. Thank you so much and enjoy the home. Don't forget to send me your pictures and remember, I'm the best, don't try to beat me, little by little. Thank you, bye.